The Pequot War, fought between 1636 and 1637, is one of the most important events in early American history. This war ultimately established English domination in southern New England. Hi, I'm Professor Tom Army. Welcome to this edition of United States History Online. In the 1630s, the Connecticut River Valley struggled with instability and turmoil. In this period, Pequots extended their control of the eastern Connecticut shoreline over rival tribes such as the Narragansett and the Wampanoag to the north and east, the Lenape to the south, and the Mohegan to the west. Now do not confuse the Mohegans with the Mohicans of central New York. James Fenimore Cooper's novel, The Last of the Mohicans, made the Mohicans famous, but not the Mohegans in Connecticut. The rival tribes around the Connecticut River Valley contended for control of the European fur trade, which the Dutch had dominated since 1625. The Dutch had skillfully built a thriving commercial empire around furs, which were in high demand throughout Europe. Now, it worked like this. Dutch traders along the Connecticut shoreline and Narragansett Bay exchanged cotton and wool and glass, pepper and silver, for Indian wampum. The Indians made wampum from channeled whelk or quahog shells. They highly buffed and polished these beads, hung them on strings, and made them into wampum belts. These beautiful belts served as currency. The Narragansett and Pequot tribes controlled the production of wampum. The Dutch would then trade the wampum with the Iroquois for beaver pelts. The English wanted to establish their own trading post to access the fur trade. To do that, William Holmes led members of the Plymouth Colony to settle in Windsor, Connecticut in 1633. John Oldham soon followed and established a post at Wethersfield, Connecticut in 1634. These posts encroached upon the Dutch Fort of Good Hope, established in 1633, at a site that ultimately became Hartford, Connecticut. Yes, the Dutch were in Hartford first. In 1635, Massachusetts Puritans arrived at the Dutch Fort and proceeded to build a small village on the north side of the Little River, and they called it Hartford. Events then moved quickly. The Dutch decided to purchase land from the Pequot and build a fort at Saybrook Point. English Puritans from Massachusetts then made the decision to drive the Dutch from Saybrook, protect their settlements downriver at Windsor, Wethersfield, and Hartford, and in 1636, erect their own fort at Saybrook Point. The Pequots viewed this as an act of English aggression, but Pequot negotiations with the English still remained a possibility. The Puritans demanded retribution from the Pequot in 1634, after the Indians murdered a British pirate named John Stone in retaliation for the murder of a Pequot Sachem, who was killed by the Dutch and not by the Puritans. The Pequot admitted their mistake to the English and they wanted to make amends. But the British had other ideas. The English demanded Stone's murderers be handed over for trial 
and that the Pequot cede territory to Massachusetts and trade only with the English from then on. The Pequot responded, no. So when John Oldham, founder of Wethersfield, was found murdered on a ship off Block Island in 1636, killed probably by Narragansett warriors, the Massachusetts Bay Colony decided on a military response. Colonel John Endicott was ordered to incite the Pequot to fight, and he did. Several tribes, like the Mohegan and Narragansett, aligned themselves with the English. But during the first six months of war, it did not help the Europeans. The Pequot used terrain and mobility and various stratagems to negate the English advantage in firearms. The turning point, however, came on May 1st, 1637, when the Pequot attacked the village of Wethersfield, killing six men, three women, and running off with two girls. The general court in Hartford responded to the attack with God's wrath. Captain John Mason of Windsor led 90 men and native allies on an attack against the Pequot Fort at Mystic slaughtering between 300 and 700 men, women, and children. About 300 Pequot escaped the English and native butchery, and so Mason and his men pursued them to a swamp in Fairfield where all but 60 Indians were massacred or eventually sold into slavery. 16 months later, the Narragansett, Mohegan, and English signed the Treaty of Hartford declaring the Pequot exterminated. The genocide of 1637 was complete. The two questions I would like you to consider are first, what precipitated the outbreak of hostilities? Was the cause economic? political or ideological? Second, why did the English decide to slaughter so many innocent people? Did ideology and self-interest go hand in hand? Captain John Smith of Jamestown warned that colonies would not be maintained by goodwill, but by force. Indians were considered savages devoid of compassion and pity. Many Puritans believed that their association with Indians would lead to a falling away from God to Satan as Christian colonists, and they would be removed from the constraints of civilization and become utterly savage. The Reverend William Simons declared that heathenism alone justified extermination. Indian good conduct was explained away by Cotton Mather as a special providence of God. To be fair, some Puritans questioned Simons and Mather's premise, but most believed, as historian Alfred A. Cave argued, they were instruments of God's wrath when persuaded that Indian iniquity threatened the security of God's people in the wilderness. Mm -hmm.